Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Blacklist Redemption. So in this episode, we had the team dealing with a kidnapping case. Essentially, this pretty bad dude named Diego ended up kidnapping a family, and it's kind of a situation where it's like, oh, this must be part of, like, obviously it's a ransom situation, and... It turns out that it's not a clear-cut ransom situation. Apparently, he wants a particular person, a dude named Carlos, because this guy's a pretty bad dude, and Carlos was someone that worked with him. In all the, he actually phrases it as Carlos was like a son to him. So he's like, I don't want money. I want Carlos, you know, because it's like, oh, Carlos got arrested. And then, you know, it's like, oh, you want the driver? Okay, you can have him. Like, he's walking away, and then Tom's talking to him. It's like, okay, you're going to be okay. And then they put a bullet in his head right there in front of him. Tom, I was like, ooh! And they're like, now you can take them away. It's like, wow. They're just obviously proof to show, like, we're not messing around. Now, what's very interesting is you end up finding out that Carlos isn't in jail. He actually was an informant that has got put in witness protection, essentially. And now that basically to get this uh, kidnapped family back, they need to get Carlos there so that they can make an exchange and everything. Which obviously Carlos is reluctant at first, but then his wife convinces him because it's like, you've lived your entire life. You don't want to live the rest of your life with looking over your shoulders, always worried about it. Especially if a man like Diego's still out there. It still haunts you because you know all the bad stuff he can do and as well as all the bad stuff he's ever done. So you do want to stop him. You're just scared because, you know, you have me and you have your daughter to protect and everything. So... Which I love the fact, because the fact is, they're like, okay, we'll offer him the insurance money that they were going to use to pay the ransom. And so, like, I love the fact is that Solomon's kind of lowballing. Like, it's like one million, two million. And then you have the situation of, like, he's like, okay, I'll do it for two million. And then his wife sits down, and she's like, no, four million. It's like, oh, Carlos, you're lucky. You married up. Which is like, to me, I guess, I was like, why didn't you immediately offer? I mean, granted, I mean, it makes sense in the grand scheme of things of why you start off on the lower end. Because it's like, if you start off with the maximum of like five million, they might want more. But at the very least, if you start on the lower end, I think it's also meant to be like a profit situation. It's like, if you stay on the lower end, because I'd assume since they said four million, I'd assume that last meal is going to go into their pockets. I can only assume that's probably why he was trying to haggle with them like that. Why he started off low like that maybe it was for that purpose too so i did love the twist of finding out like because at first it's kind of like oh man like he knows like diego ends up finding out it's like oh about these um how's he and um people out there he's talking about nez and um solomon but it's like okay how do he know about that and he also brings up the fact is you know when carlos gets into the car he's like yeah the fact is that you betrayed me it's like how did he know about that turns out the insurance guy that was involved in all of this is actually the bad guy it's not diego who leads this group it's actually the insurance guy basically he's kind of doubling up his money essentially basically he puts these particular families into a situation and then he's like oh we'll pay out the insurance and basically the insurance is being paid for the ransom is actually going back into his own pocket. So it's like found a way to be a extremely, 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 extremely scummy scumbag dude. So I mean, it was even brutal the way he, what he was going to do to Carlos. He was basically cutting a certain part of his leg so that he would bleed out. It's like, oh, one part, if I cut it in a certain spot, you'd bleed out in like 30 seconds. But other spot, it's like, oh, you bleed out a lot, but it's like enough that you won't die. And so we can keep talking and stuff like that. But luckily, the others were able to uh, get to him in time. Uh, there was an interesting moment that obviously they were coming out and then the insurance guy was about to pull a gun on Tom and Carlos, but then Diego showed up and shot him in the back. And the last thing he said is like, my son, because even when it was happening, he saw like was what was happening to Diego. He couldn't actually look because no matter if, even if Diego betrayed him, Diego was like a son to him because Diego brought it up. The fact is that, um, I mean, Carlos brought it up that Diego uh, treated him right, gave him a home and everything. Yes, he made him do some very bad things, putting a gun in his hand and making him hurt people. But nevertheless, he was still... He even brought it up to Tommy's like, it's very messed up. The fact is that even though I know he's a bad guy, he needs to go down. But the fact is, there's a part of me that still cares about him, which I'm sure Tom kind of knew. I mean, Tom, him and Tom are very similar, too. It's like both of them went off and had a hat, like kind of a, hat, a life. They have a wife and, and both have daughters. And the fact is, they kind of come from criminal backgrounds, where it's like someone else took them in and raised them. So in his particular case, that being the major. And it's like the major was someone that he really cared about. But it turned out to be like. Liz, Liz meant more to him than just being with the major. So, um, same thing applied for Carlos. He just wanted out. He wanted to be out of that world and just be able to find happiness. So, 
But that wasn't all there is to this story. Because on the other side of the story, we have Naz, you know, Tom going to Naz about the whole, obviously, Howard situation. Obviously, this is kind of coincided with the main story. And then, obviously, like, Naz is kind of like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Howard's still alive? It's like, yeah, he never actually got on a plane. And now it puts, like, the whole t team is kind of almost like, without realizing the entire team is kind of against each other. Because you have Scotty having... Uh, Howard kind of locked up in this facility. Basically, she's trying to get answers about everything. She's like, oh, I'm so sad. I'm trying to figure out like what you've been up to and everything. I'm so worried about you. And the fact is, you crashed your own... She was talking to Solomon. And she was like, oh, the fact of the matter is he crashed his own plane, faking his own death. And then he burned a lot of stuff in the um, house so that they wouldn't know exactly what he was up to or what went down. Which is like, once again, I'll kind of uh, funnel through it and everything. But, well... It's just so interesting to see kind of the team literally split in two because you have uh, Solomon and Scotty on one side and you have Tom and Naz on the other side. And obviously in the middle you have Dumont who knows literally nothing about what's going on right now. But what's fascinating to me is just like... Because for Naz this is all about helping out Howard because it's like she owes Howard everything because he kind of helped her pick herself back up you know, when there was no one there for for her he was there for her so obviously she's going to help and Tom almost got him out of that facility which I really liked the moment when he was like I'm getting you out of here dad and then like Howard's like you've never called me dad before which I, I kind of brought that kind of referenced that in something else earlier what I was just uh, talking about but I just thought that was just kind of interesting it's like oh you called him dad that was kind of sweet because he's never really been on such a personal level with him. Because I guess it, because Tom has always always been in a very complicated situation. He knows Scotty's his mom. He knows Howard's his dad. But it's like it's still not a hundred percent his world. It's still kind of a little bit weird for him. Because for one, he's living this double life of hiding all. He's spying on his mom for his dad. And now he's you know the question comes up is my dad crazy? But now after last episode and everything coming out, it's kind of like well maybe my dad's not so crazy. So maybe I should believe him. So, because before he'd always been kind of on Scotty's side, because he's like, oh, Scotty's not a bad person. But um, this episode kind of showed, like, maybe she is, because the fact is that she had Howard hooked up to a machine and had them shocked repeatedly. What I thought was very interesting is when it was like, she had Dumont looking through a flash drive that had, like, camera footage that basically had Tom on it. But then, like, Dumont at first didn't want to give her it. He's like, okay, so can you tell me what this is all about? She's like, you know, it's like, just say that the person that was on that tape is actually an enemy of housing. And he's like, no, they can't be. you got to be mistaken. She's like, yes, they are. Now, show me who it is. And he's up showing her it's Tom. Because, obviously, Dumont likes Tom. It's like, Tom's been with us. He's doing all this good work. There's no way he's betraying us. There's no way he's an enemy. And it hits you know, Scotty hard too, because she actually likes Tom, you know, it's like, the fact is that he's kind of been like a shoulder that she can kind of lean on and rely on, he's been so much help, he's kind of been, you know, very, I don't know what the right word would be, like, well, just emotionally kind of there for her, like, you know, asking her about her family situation and everything, and like kind of con trying to console her and everything, so I think, you know, she kind of, like, felt something a little bit there, and it just kind of hurts her to find out, oh, he's the one who betrayed her, so she gave Solomon the order, it's like, yep, I want you to kill Tom Kane, and it's like, ooh, and she goes back and tells, um, Howard, kind of gloating, like, oh, the fact of the matter is, I would ask him, but he's about to die, and it's like, and then Howard's like, you don't want to do that, she's like, what are you talking about, it's like, yeah, that'd be your own, you'd be, then you'd be killing our son, she's like, you're lying. He's like, no. You kept wondering why you, he felt so familiar and just why you always felt this weird connection when you talked to him and everything. That's why. You know, it's like, the fact is, he's like, you can, we can go back to hating each other as much as we want, but let's not kill the one thing in this world, the one good thing that came out of this, like, twisted family of ours. So, to me, I look at that as a very interesting situation where it's like, I'm start. I'm I'm still kind of agreeing with what I said last episode. If you never didn't listen to last week's episode, basically I'm making it. I brought up the thought of like like last episode made me start thinking like more like no, there's a lot more complexity to this. I think they're both right and wrong. Obviously, there is a problem there within Housian where the, it's um this whole Whitehall situation, whatever it may really be. But the fact is, they're so busy at each other's throat, not realizing that there's another threat because the way that. You know, Scotty puts it, it's like, oh, he crashed his own plane, but it's like, maybe he did. And the way she was devastated when she found out that Tom was her son, and then, like, the fact is that you had 
Solomon almost being ready to pull the trigger, and she was like begging him not to. He's like, just stand down. And you see her breaking down. It's like, that's not acting. Like, she legitimately loves and cares for Tom. So it's like, I don't think she's the, I don't, like, it's hard to say, dude. Because maybe she's lived this life for so long that it was just kind of like, oh, like, you know, she's adapted his personality. Or, you know, maybe whoever is pretending to be Scotty Hargrave is actually, you know, maybe they had a son of their own before they had to adopt her life. And now when they look at Tom's situation, or rather Christopher's situation, they go, and it makes them think of their real son or something like that. To me, I was also thinking, what if we end up finding out there's a twist to all of this and that actually Tom isn't, you know, their son. That all this time and effort they put into thinking that he is. It's kind of interesting, too, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it. I never thought about the parallels of, like, obviously Liz trying to find out a lot about her past because her past is connected with Reddington and finding out more about her parents and everything. Well, one of her parents. She still doesn't know who her dad is. Obviously, she knows who her mom is. But now you kind of see the same thing happening with Tom. Like, obviously, like... That's what I'm kind of thinking, because I feel like, why would she break down like that? Like, you know, no one's around. There's no reason to keep up the acting if that's the case. But to break down like that, it's like, I think she's really Scotty. I think there are some issues with Howard that maybe he's not all 100% right in the head, that he is suspicious of her and everything. He's bringing up like, oh, I know all there is to know about Whitehall. I know what this is really all about. So I'm very interested to see where things go from here, because it's like, um, now we have the situation of Scotty knows who Tom really is, but probably won't tell him that she knows and Tom knows who Scotty really is to him but he won't tell her but the fact is Scotty will probably look back on last episode last week's episode when he was like oh I haven't 100% honest with you and she might be thinking like oh he was trying to tell me then and now I'm very interested to see what she does like how does her demeanor change around Tom now that she knows it's true because the fact that she didn't even tell Solomon which it was kind of interesting seeing Solomon. Will, he's like, no, like the fact of the matter is Tom is a threat. He's working with Howard. He's kind of a threat to you. So the very, he bring, bring, brought it up like a couple episodes back. Like, oh, this woman is like my brother. Like she took me in, gave me a purpose and everything, saved my life. So, you know, you mess with her, her problems become my problem. So to see him kind of willing to do that to Tom, obviously for Solomon, he kind of like, like I said, like Solomon never seemed like the type of guy that had allegiance. It's like, oh, whoever paid the highest amount of money, I kind of served. That's kind of where I kind of got from like last season when he hit up, you know, Liz and Tom's wedding. But obviously this, like I said, this kind of elaborates a lot more on him and Naz kind of building who they are as characters. You know, also Dumont as well as Scotty, even building upon Tom. Like Tom was already constantly being built as we learned out more and more about his backstory as well as just seeing him change from who he was at the beginning of the series. I, I'm actually surprised. It's something I've never brought up before. Like, I thought Tom's story would have just been like, never knew it'd be such an integrated part of the Blacklist show and just how much of a big influence he would be into Liz's life like that. That was just like, well, once he's found out, well, mainly because, like, wasn't it back in season one? I thought, yeah, back in season one, it was kind of like, oh, he's dead. But then you obviously find out season two, he's still alive. And it's just like, it's kind of weird when you look at where where their relationship is going over the course of the series. It's like, wow, you, you shot him and then you had him locked up on a ship for a long period of time. Very, very interesting, so... But also, he also like, but now that like the whole team is like, because obviously Scott, I mean, uh, Tom doesn't know about the fact that Solomon had him in his sights. He even makes a joke about it. He's like, oh man, he's talking about us taking Solomon. He's like, I know, right? It's like you want to put me in your crosshairs and pull the trigger. It's like, don't worry. The feeling's mutual, my friend. Kind of having a twisted smile on his face. It's like, that's a very twisted joke. Because Tom doesn't even know. It's like, so now we have Solomon with his eyes on Tom. Granted, he doesn't know that Nez is working with Tom. None of them do, so. It's just definitely going to be interesting going forward, especially when it comes with Dumont, because Dumont's kind of caught in the middle, too. And it's like, I bet you Susan's going to t well, tell him not to say anything. It's like, yeah, we'll put that all like underwater. He's like, well, are you sure? But you were saying Tom's... A no, it turns out to be something I was mistaken. So, very interested to see where this goes. It's I don't think she's going to outright to ask Tom about it. What she's most likely going to do is just keep it a secret so till she can kind of verify it for herself, whether or not that's her son. But overall, just a very good episode with those twists and turns. Like, uh, just, I was not expecting her to find out this soon, especially under these circumstances. I thought maybe some season finale type of thing she finds out, but not like at this, not this point and not this way. I was like, because the moment, because Tom knew something about the flash drive, but maybe he was hoping like, uh, maybe there wasn't a good enough look at his face, but he knows about it. So maybe he just couldn't do anything about it. It's like, well, I got to get to Howard. Got to deal with that whole situation for now. So you also have this interesting relationship building between Nez and... 
Tom because Naz like it seems like it's kind of the same thing with Scotty and Tom like she had this feeling but she couldn't really place it and I think the same thing with Naz because Naz like relied so heavily on um Howard he was there during her drug problems and everything and it's like she's telling Tom it's just like I'm gonna need someone's help again and Tom's being there for her you know which is which is very interesting because it's like you know because he still hasn't told her who he really is and I don't know if he ever will but um, it's just like that's probably why it's like oh that's why she's she can lean on him because like she leaned on his dad you know for a helping hand so it's like why not his son too so it's, I mean that's where my mind's at on it's, it was just kind of an interesting thing when you really sit there and think about it long enough so but uh, really that's all I want to talk about in this episode to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye.